Welcome back to YCS Sydney 2019. We're here with the final round of Swiss before we end a top cut. Um, we've got a make or break match here. Both players, winner makes it, win loser doesn't make it. Oh, loser potentially doesn't make it. I think with it the numbers we have, there's a slight chance, but I don't think you want to bet on that. I think you just want to go for the win. You want to guarantee yourself you don't want, you don't want that potential heart attack you'll get. I'm so excited for this match. It's the it's like uh, it's like the home stretch of the race. It's like you WA versus New South Wales as well. Yeah. Like <laughs> and even for everyone else in the tournament, you're almost there. You just want to make it in. Half the people will go home heartbroken and the other half will be happy that they make it in. So there we are. Two different records, both very interesting. It's seven wins and two draws for Nathan Kosk from Western Australia. Uh Paddy Stefranko or Chops as he's affectionately known as, uh seven wins, one loss, one draw. And he's playing Trickstar Sky Striker, a deck we haven't seen in a while. Cost playing just normal Sky Striker. Uh, both players know what they're doing. This is the odd matchup from WCQ 2018. I'm going to be a little biased, and hopefully Chops brings it home from New South Wales. Uh, got to go with the Cosk, though. Uh, fair, fair. He's come a long way. He's come from Perth about five hours away. Yeah, sure, surely he gets it because of yeah. just travel, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's some sort of advantage. Yeah. But we see Chops starting with the Pot of Desires, the draw to... <laughs> Card we've seen a lot today. Uh, he's banished no monsters, so I think that's pretty good. He banished the scapegoat. Uh, what's scapegoat at right now? Scapegoat. Scapegoat's at two. So losing one of those is potentially harmful. But now summoning the Candina, which I think he just drew off the desires. He he did lose his uh he did lose one of his reincarnations though. He's getting a Lycoris. I can see on his deck list he only plays two Lycoris. Is he playing how how many uh, reincarnations is he playing? Two or three? He is playing two reincarnations, so he lost one of those as well. So very interesting. He's got a lot of one-offs left in his deck, but a lot of cards in hand, thanks to Pot of Desires. Uh, I do see Chops' deck. This is a very streamlined deck with three Candina, two Lycus, one Lily Bear, and three Ash Blossom. He's got the standard spell lineup of uh, three Light Stage and two Terraforming. He's got a small Sky Striker engine of three Engage, two Widow Anchor, one Horner Drones. He's got three Mind Control, three Pot of Desires, two Caught by the Grades, and two Scapegoats. And in the traps, he has three Evenly Matched. Three impermanence, two solemn strike, and two reincarnation. So his deck is built to go first and second. Which is good and bad sometimes. If you go first and draw, you're going second cards. It gets a bit awkward, but it also <laughs> helps a lot when you lose dice rolls and you have to go second. Uh, so we see a lot of spells in Nathan Kosk's hand after Chops has set two spell and traps after summoning his Lacorus to the field. So now every time uh, Nathan decides to add a card from his deck to hand, either by drawing or a uh, effect that adds a card, he will take 200 damage from Lacorus and a further 200 from the light stage. This makes it choppy for Nathan Koss. He has to decide which spells are important enough for him to take 400 because they do add up over time. It does become a lot of damage, like, unbelievably quick, and it, and it might just give them enough damage. It might put you in a range where they can just comfortably attack you in one turn to end the game. And with, or cards, and with cards like Lily Bell in the deck as well, you can attack directly through anything as yeah. well. Or they don't even have to attack you for game. They just have to leave you on a low enough life point where the Licorice next turn will just be able to burn you when you're trying to play. I think I just saw a mind control in Nathan's hand, which he's going to set to potentially play around a reincarnation just in case Chops has one. I think he is playing Another well into the reincarnation, which is usually played in unison with Golden Lockbird to be able to take out their whole hand. But what we do see is that Chops has evaluated that Golden Lockbird was not good enough to play in his deck to not play it at all. So he didn't even play the Golden Lockbird, so <laughs> Nathan potentially playing around something that's not even there. That the mind games is huge because they're going to play around it anyway. They have to. Of course. And that, obviously this is what we're seeing Nathan do now, setting his whole hand before starting to activate cards, and he leads with terraforming. Ideally, he also just wants to set his hand because he likes those cards and doesn't want a new hand from reincarnation. He might want to keep his hand and not lose the hand to something that's not as good. So he does have two copies of mind control in his main deck, and he has drawn both of them, which are set. So he would probably, uh, the only reason he wouldn't do it now is because uh, he does have Engage as well. Yep. And he wouldn't want to have a monster in his main monster zone. So this is why getting the field spell is really good. Uh, he'd be able to potentially get that Lacorus off the field. Yep. Uh, but uh, to minimize risk, he may want to engage and add a multi-roll as a backup plan. Yep. But he's obviously thinking up these options now. So he, he set cards there, uh, two my control, one engage, and one unknown at this point. He also still has that Metal Force Fusion in the graveyard, which will end with draw a card. So with three spells in grave now, he activates that Scusher engage and quickly hit by the Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom enjoys spring. So now uh, Nathan will have to think again how he approaches this. With again, two mind control sets still. Do you know what his last card set uh, is? Still an unknown to me. Uh, Nathan does have the Metal Force Fusion in his graveyard. He can return that to the deck for an extra draw. Hopefully, he won't draw into the Metal Force Fusion again. But uh, yeah, I think he's he, he probably needs to draw, try and draw a monster or use uh, Area Zero to try and get to a card so he can start playing. He does elect to go for the Metal Force Fusion to shuffle that back in the deck. 
I think he wants to save the area zero for if he decides to mind control the Lacore so he can get it off the field. Yes, that that that, that is also a line of play. We also know that Cos has already lost ten percent of his life points just by playing cards that he would normally play anyway. And he's gonna take another four hundred here. And uh well Chops doesn't really have to do much and he's taking his opponent down one by one. Yeah, he's life has points at a time and he's a candina in his hand for his next turn as well, although it will probably get oh no, it's not widow anchor, just mind control. It it, it could be a widow anchor the last card, which I'm still not sure. But yeah. he definitely has two mind control set. Based on what Kosk is doing, I don't think he's drawn into a monster. So th there's the mind control play. So he'll probably try to use area zero now. There it is. Um Chops just allowing There's it to a go twin through. Twin Twister, an Ash Blossom, and another Twin Ooh. Twister. Ooh, cost whiffs that area zero. Definitely not want something he wants during the last round of Swiss. So now he probably has to find his options here. Depending what that last card is, I don't think he can get this Lacorus off the field. He may be in a, a very difficult position. Yeah, but he, he on the bright side, he does get 1,600 points of damage and just a level up the life uh, point. He can't lead. attack because of my oh. control. Damn, that is not a Widow Anchor. So, and the other downside as well, he set his cards to play around Reincarnation, but that now allows uh, Chops to be able to use his light stage to take those cards out if they're not quick plays. Mm. Oh, and the end phase scapegoat. There's a scapegoat, and Nathan has and accepted that this Nathan match is not going anywhere, and he does not want to take up any more time against a deck which does a lot of residual damage. It's another smart move here, as we've talked about over the weekend, with our time becoming a new factor into the game now with the new time end of uh, match procedures, uh, that people may want to end the game quicker like this, uh, yeah. to because he, he may have been able to stay in the game. Yeah. They may have thought it's not worth to do so. Yeah. It might have taken him a few turns to recover. He might not even win that. And he's just like, no, I, I don't want to deal with this. Had, uh, Chops has like trick star Candina Lycras that can just deal 200 damage without interacting with me. And then uh, it's just not worth it. Okay, so we're going to the side decks now. Um, I assume Nathan will want to be going first. Uh, so any side deck, he actually plays two copies of Inspector Border, which could potentially come in. Because uh, yeah. it's actually quite hard for Trickster to deal with that, the Inspector Border. Uh, we also got the Hercules bases in his side deck, which is interesting. Three copies of Shared Ride, which will most definitely be coming in against Trickstar, which yep. is a deck that likes to add a lot of cards from the deck to the hand. Oh, on the on the other hand, though, if you Shared Ride them and they have a, they can get multiple Licorice on the field, they can potentially just burn you through your own Shared Ride. That's a double-edged sword there. It's definitely another play. So you have to be weighing up the risk if he wants to side that in. Yep. Um, but yeah, I can't see any other cards. You really yeah. like evenly matched is obviously a ghost second, and um, ghost bell is uh, less effective. It can negate the reincarnation's yeah. grave effect. Yeah, it can. It you can definitely. Um, over here on Chops' side, he's got a uh, four cyframes being three gamma one drive. He's got ghost reef and winter cherries. I don't see that coming in. Three twin sisters. I can see that coming in. I can see three shared rights coming in. There's a warning and a judgment. I I don't think he will put those in going second. Uh, yeah. Um, is there potential for Chops to decide that Ghost Reaper, since he is going second, is a good option since he does play the Strauss Racker cards in his extra deck already? Uh, perhaps he might. He, he did win game one. He has the flexibility to try something risky. He doesn't have to play it safe. He doesn't have to go by the books. He might be able to, He has some breathing room. I, I really like that. Mm. He also, uh, I'm also seeing uh, Nathan weighing up if he wants to put Ghost Bell in his uh, yeah, deck. Yeah, for, for that side. reincarnation play of we were course. talking about. Uh, I think it's also... With, uh, it's also good that Patrick was able to conceal that he plays Mind Control, whereas uh, Nathan has to reveal he played Mind Control in Game 1. So a lot of cards that you see is going to affect what you side, right? It's, it, that is definitely true. And uh, in, in Nathan's uh, main deck, he already has three copies of Twin Twister, so they'll probably stay in anyway. Yeah, and he revealed two off the Area Zero, so... Uh, he, he will most likely side the Mind Controls out since he is going first, um, and it is not as good against Trickstar going second. <laughs> Looking at their faces, you can see Nathan Cost is really concentrating. He doesn't want to make any mistake. He only has this chance to be able to pull, and he, if he loses this one, he won't get another shot at our uh, side decking, whereas uh, Chops, with the focus face, he looks a bit more relaxed. Yeah, both, both players quite seasoned now. Um, Nathan's played for a very long time with uh, a lot of uh, good results in um, yeah, three events in the past. He's come first in Swiss almost three times at Nationals. He's made second in, uh, second in National. I, I'll actually pull this up, whereas Chops, Chops did top uh, one YCS of uh, Metal Foes one. And, and Chops also recently uh, competed at the GG, the Good Games uh, Nationals, yeah, um, where he won the state championships for New South Wales. So technically, he's the New South Wales state champion on that <laughs> side of the bracket. Yeah, uh, he, his friend Koji did win the feature match as well. So uh, uh, I think if he can channel the strength from his uh, friend, and sitting in the same seat too, very good strategy by uh, uh, Patrick. I believe there. Koji Koji was in the left seat. Ooh, was he not? The Dynamist. Player, oh, yes. Um, his name escapes. I know me. the Dynamist player. Liam. Leo. Liam. It was Liam Andrews versus uh, Liam. No, Ko Koji was on the left. He was playing against uh, the Bono on the right. Oh, you are correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Different game. I was talking. Uh, I was more referring to the Altergeist game that we had previously. So Nathan Koss, 2018 Nationals Top 32. I believe he was... Uh, he, he did come 
something in Swiss. He was second in uh, national 2017. He came top eight at the uh, Oceanic World Championship qualifier in 2016, just missing Worlds by two matches. Came top four in national 2016. He's uh, topped our first, second, and third YCSs, and then he's topped at least top four or better, wait, top eight or better, at 2010, 2011, 2012, and 2013 Nationals. I'm sorry to interrupt there, but he has landed the Inspector Board, as we talked about in his side deck, and set Shared Ride, which he's activating now in response to the live stage. So very strong opening from Nathan Kosk without having to commit too much to the board. He does have an Engage and an Ash Blossom in hand as well as a backup plan. Yep. So Chops will be really uh, worried about seeing that opening from Nathan there. Definitely. So he, he couldn't even Ash Blossom the Shared Ride if he had it. I'm not sure if he does. Uh, but yeah, so Nathan's going to get out to draw another free card here and then potentially either end uh, Patrick's turn or Chops will have to play into it and give him even more cards. The and struggle with uh, Inspector Border is that it has 2,000 attack points and Trickstar just don't have ways to be able to attack over that. They'll need to access the extra deck to be able to attack over it. Um, but then when you do access your extra deck, you'll be able to... Um, Use effects again because Inspector Border requires you Ooh, to Oh, and the oh, mind control mind comes down to take over the Inspector Border. That is one of the best outs of it. That is going to be six. Oh, he's going to link it away immediately. So he's going to make a link play now. So Nathan, uh, without overcommitting, has given himself still a chance uh, to be able to play in this game by having the engage in hand and an Ash Blossom. But very, very strong by Chops there, having the mind control, being able to use the full effect to out the Inspector Border. Yep. Now he's making uh, accessing the extract for link play. Most likely just to get the Inspector Border off the field. So he summons the Nightmare Phoenix and uh, hits for 1,900 damage directly. Uh, it's interesting he went for Nightmare Phoenix because that's a card that might come up later in the game. Um, looking at Chops' X-Ray, he's got two copies of Sky Strikers, Gari, one Shizuku, one Hayate, one Link Karibo, one Link Spider, one Space Insulator, one Isolde, one Cerberus, one Phoenix, one Unicorn, one Ningrisu, one Topological, one Boral Load, and one Boral Sword. It's interesting he didn't make a Cerberus because Cerberus can... Uh, be expendable in this matchup. Yeah, he's definitely considering though he had it in his hand and then he just decided he wanted the extra damage from Nightmare Phoenix, make it even harder yeah. for Sky Striker to deal with it. So him, he was making the tactical play of choosing 300 damage and a stronger monster over the utility that Phoenix may be able to provide later. So with uh, two sets from Chobs, uh, I'm unsure what they are, but Nathan Cross would definitely be weighing up the, the potential for a uh, jamming re waves that a I reincarnation see. to possibly be set. Indeed, he has, I see a Jammy Waves and Afterburners, the Engage that we're talking about, the Ash Blossom, and the Widow Anchor. He's got five very powerful and unique cards that he can use to be able to pick apart uh, Chops' board. I think w between Afterburners and Jammy Waves, he's probably going to be able to clear Chops' whole board and uh, resolve an Engage with the draw. It's interesting with him setting his whole hand, he's decided to keep the Engage in hand for now. Anyway. I yeah, I don't think he's going for the draw. I think he wants to use Afterburners as effect to be able to destroy two cards. Or All the Ash Blossom comes down again to hit the in Engage. That's both games now that has happened. Yeah, maybe having the Inspector Border so that he couldn't actually share drive was a detriment. Maybe he just... Maybe be able to force the Ash Blossom yeah. out first and then next turn be able to use it. Yeah, I, I feel like he should. He could have potentially used Inspector Border as a mid-game card after he had total dominance of the board and just to be able to hold the fort while... Play. So he's activated Jamming Waves to destroy the reincarnation, which isn't chained yep. from Chops. So Chops probably identifies that Nathan's hand isn't the strongest. Yeah. Uh, so, but like you said, now the um, Afterburner is going to be able to resolve both of its effects now that there is three spells in Nathan's graveyard. Um, interesting that he didn't choose to destroy the Light Stage, he but taking out a Solemn Strike is also very powerful. Yep. He feels. Uh, yeah. I think. I think that was a correct pick. Being able to hit the back row, whereas on-field Light Stage is only hurting you for two hundred every time, but uh. We'll see how this plays out. that cost, uh, Nathan decided to set his hand before he activated his cards, considering that he had the Ash Blossom in hand to stop the reincarnation anyway? Yeah, I think it also telegraphed that he had a, a very weak hand. This Lycris is getting summoned. It will hit for 1,600 plus an additional 200 from the field spell. Huh? And now every time Nathan decides to add a card to his hand, he will keep taking 400 damage. So a lot of pressure being put on the board here with not many cards. Oh, my and bad. That was a Lycris on the grave that he banished reincarnation to summon. Yes. And Chops will set one more and pass, and then... Lycoris and the field spell will burn him for 400 just to draw, putting Nathan on half life points. So the light stage now targeting the face down, as we said. Indeed. And Nathan with just left with an Ash Blossom in hand after the field spell resolves. Although they're gesturing now, maybe uh, Chops already ended his turn before activating it and he's trying to go back. They're just trying to decide now. I think... Because uh, uh, he did gesture that he passed his turn, um, and then he's now wanting to use the Light Stage effect. I'm not sure what the verbal confirmation was, as we can't hear them. 
they're thinking about it now. Uh, well, moving on from that, uh, wh what what are you excited to see in the top card? Do you do you want to see the dynamist in the top card? Do you want to see a lot of rogue decks? What do you want to see? Or do you want to see like? I do want to see a unique balance of decks, but yeah. I also am very interested to see the battle between the top three decks. I really, down to it. really, really want to see the prank kids guy that we featured early. He's uh, Cameron, I believe his name is. He's yeah. technically still undefeated with six wins and three draws. Very unique record, but we've seen multiple times over the weekend. Mm. What did so, uh, I think you were a burial goods by any chance? Yeah, burial goods is not something he wants to see right now. I believe the set card is a widow anchor. <laughs> it. So he is deciding to pass again, and now the light stages are going to activate, and widow anchor will possibly take control of this Lacoris. And uh, Chops is responding, so he may have something to stop this. He might, or he's just evaluating uh, if it's okay for him to just take the Lacoris because uh, it's not posing a threat without any active effect. So with two cards in hand, and Chops being very high on life points, he's he can comfortably just not play many cards. So he's setting one and taking back control of his Lycoris. So it's one more turn where uh, Nathan does not take any damage, but he will take four hundred in his draw phase. That puts him on thirty-five hundred. A lot of pressure being applied here for Nathan to make his turns count, especially when the best cards in his deck to draw right now will involve adding or drawing from the deck. I think a line of play last in Cosk could have taken was um he could have taken the licorice and then summoned the ash and made a link play and then he uh Chops wouldn't have gotten the licorice back. But he has top decked the Sky Striker mech engage. Sky Striker maneuver. Engage. That's a huge draw because it also draws one card. However, uh Lycoris will burn for six hundred damage. It would, wait, was it yeah, it will deal four hundred plus two hundred. I believe it's eight hundred. I believe since the draw and the uh, ad are separated, even though they're the same effect, I think it actually resolves oh. the field spell twice. I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure the judges will sort that out, uh, and then the life points will be fixed accordingly. Oh. Well, oh, that's an interaction that's uh, very niche, but uh, we will uh, hopefully have that resolved and uh, cleared for us. So going for the ray. Nathan must be feeling at the top of the world, top decking engage when all odds are against him. But he is now taking a lot of life points, and... Uh, Getting to the point of this game now, he's leaving himself vulnerable to um, just confirming something here. I think he's confirming the life. I think Chops, Chops, I think the whole Chops not being able to light stage the anchor does, is coming back to bite him. The results would have been very different if he got in that extra 1800 points of damage last turn. Very true. If that was the case, he'd have less than half of his life points left. So potentially there, uh, Nathan not opting to draw, um, and then. I th I think they were, I think he didn't I probably think. didn't declare, which is obviously something you have to do. I'm not sure what that was. Again, uh, one of those weird ones. So we'll just have to move on from there. But there is a rain hand now with an ash blossom and I think a burial good still. But that does uh, mean that Cosco only loses 400 points from Licorice and the field spell. <laughs> and uh, Licorice does burn from adding from the graveyard, so Kagari adding back a card will still reduce his life points by 400. So it's probably weighing up his options here. <coughs> He still has the Ash, so any uh, so so to be honest, uh, Chops' hand hasn't been that great. Like he has only had a Lacorus access. He hasn't had access to anything after that because he had to search in response to Shared Right, just went for Lacorus instead of getting Candino, and he hasn't seen any other ways to play after that. He's using Widow Anchor to take the Lacorus. He might be just going for the Ash Blossom play, knowing that uh Chops isn't oh he's going for the Ray. I think he's just pushing for damage at this point. Well it is a lot of damage to yeah. try and level the game back up as he has been behind for most of this game. Especially because Ray can now summon Hayate. And or potentially uh, Kagari to get yeah. back the um, engage that is in his graveyard, mm. and then a potential link play for a Nightmare Phoenix or something of the sort. Yeah, just clear out that monster from the main monster zone, make Chops not get the Licorice back, while at the same time clearing a card. I think he might still be valuing his uh, Ash Blossom very highly right now. He thinks he might need it to prevent a potential Chop deck later. He's going for the Kagari. He's not wasting any time Ooh, going for the, the Hayate. Permanence comes down to negate the Kagari's effect to get engaged back in oh, his hand. That's huge, but now he might be forced to link it away. Taking 1,500 damage from Kagari. So it was 16 from Lakorus, 15 from Ray, and 15 from Kagari. That is 4,600 damage, which should leave uh, Chops on 34. 3,400. Which closes the gap substantially to the point where they're almost even on life points now. Well over 20 minutes on the clock. And I, both of them are feeling comfortable with time. Time being a friend of Patrick because he is playing Trickstar. So, so the downside here for Nathan, he's got two options. He can either link away with the Lacorus, so then uh, Chops does not get access to his car back, or he could leave the Kagara in the field, giving the Lacorus back. 
knowing they could go, well, then in the end phase, gain all his attack points back from all the spells in the graveyard. Yeah. And also, then he still has access to Ray. But again, he's already seen uh, Chops use one mind control this game. He may be fearing that happening again. He can identify that Chops does. Oh, no, he did not see the mind control from Chops. He used it in oh. at the start of the game to take the Inspector Water. Oh, right. So yes. he has seen it now. Oh. Which could and, uh, and also, uh, I think, does Chops play Widow Anchor as well? Uh, yes, he plays two copies of Widow Anchor. So it's another potential draw. I think he may be close to three spells in Grave. Yep. So instead, Nathan going for uh, a Link 1 play. He's going for Shizuku. So this, this telegraphs that he may be giving back the Lacorus and adding a uh, card in the end phase, which cannot be Anchor or uh, Engage since he's already got them in the graveyard. So it means he'll, uh, he's got plenty of cards. He's all jamming waves, afterburners, everything in it. They're all in the graveyard. You can add multi roll, potentially draw into an area zero next turn. I think the safest play is to get a Hornet Drones in case the mind control does come down to yeah. turn, himself, turn him off Ray, um, which I think he is considering. I having think having the Ash Blossom in hand still means he does have a chance to uh, mm. stop any potential play from Chops in the next turn. I think he's identified Chops as a weekend, and then he's keeping the Ash Blossom in case Chops draws a card like Pot of Desires or something. Um, well, Lycris so should be on the why field, I believe. Why go back to the hand? I, I assume it's to the field. Huh. Which is fine. Uh, so luckily they sort of that. And there oh, is the, mind, there's control. the mind control. Huge draw. I think th I believe this ju this should. Since uh, he does have Sky Strikers in his extra deck, that will be enough for the game. And well yeah. played to Chops there. Mind control coming in oh, right at the end there. I wonder if, he, wonder if he drew that or if he really had that for the whole time. Yeah. Because for the whole game, Nathan didn't have any monsters on the field. So maybe he was just holding that second mind control. Very unfortunate for Nathan because he doesn't look happy. Uh, he might have a chance of making it in with his score of five, uh, seven, one, two. Which is very awkward considering it's his first loss for the whole weekend. Yeah, it, it, it's very unfortunate having only one loss being the final round and still like having to pray that he makes it in the top card. He might squeeze in in the 30, in like 30, 31, 32 or late 20s. We'll mm -hmm. just have to see how he goes. It all depends on how the other matchups went, how many draws there were, how many losses there were. So very interesting game there. The, one of the old matchups from, like I said, the WCQ. Uh, there's a ban list since then and it's good to see both decks still very powerful. I think it's the first time we've seen Trickster on stream uh, yes. this weekend. Yes. And there will be in the top cut, at least one representation will be. And we've had a wide assortment of decks on stream today. Oh, uh, this weekend, This yeah. weekend, I think we've had over 10. Yeah, we've had Easily. so many different decks. It's actually great. And even with Thunder Dragon, we've had three different variants of Thunder Dragon on the stream. We've yeah. had uh, vastly different decks. And we, we should be able to have an interview now with Chops coming through. Yeah. Sure. Um, but before that, yeah, like, like you said, uh, it's interesting though, all these decks that aren't in the main three decks that we saw represented, yeah. they've been able to still win these games. Like we saw ABC take down Alter guys. Mm -hmm. We've now seen Trickster take down Sky Striker. Yeah, we've seen we've seen a lot of cool stuff. See Dynamis, like he put up a, like he didn't draw the best hand, but he still put up a good fight against Alter guys. There's another good deck in the, in the format. We've seen Prank Kids take out Sky Striker as well, man. We've seen a lot we of saw crazy. So the Goki stuff. Rongo deck take down. Uh, Thunder, Thunder Dragon Thunder early Dragon on in the tournament as well. Against as well. Yeah, well that was oh, a man, big game. That, that was, was the, one of those 1% games we talked about just before it too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, very good uh, variety going through. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some sort of top 32 breakdown after this yes. round of like uh, who's in there and who's out. Yep, we will be doing our homework shortly. Uh, we'll bring in Charles for an interview and uh, yeah. We'll be back soon. Uh, welcome back to the YCS 2019. We have here the uh, winner of our last feature match, Patrick Safranco. Chops, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Now that yeah. you're locked in? Yeah, I've um, 
Yeah, yeah, it's real, real nice, real nice. Uh, I mean, I was feeling a bit scared about the feature match. Uh, I didn't play too well last feature match, but I've uh, I've come back. I've built up my mental fortitude, mm -hmm. and uh, That's I'm what back. We like to see. I'm back with a vengeance. Yeah, and uh, how does it feel knowing that you're locked in? You don't have to wait for breakers. You don't have to, you know, be on the be uh, on the edge of your seat. It's bloody amazing. Like, uh, yeah, just. But uh, not not too unexpected. Like I came in thinking I'm gonna do good. That's how that's how I roll. Nah, yeah. So uh, we have a few questions that uh we would like to clear up with uh with things that happened in the match. There was a whole light stage incident where you guys were mm -hmm. going back and forth. What was that happening? Uh, that was just uh an instance of whether me passing turn had gone through. This. Okay. Because yeah. you probably realized that oh you had another play, but then you know. And I was just like okay, let's just move on. And then there was a whole light uh the um engage one. Mm -hmm. What what, ha what happened there? Why didn't you uh well we uh we did life mm -hmm. um for licorice damage so uh he took four hundred yep. and then the judge pointed out if you're taking the four hundred you've decided to resolve the effect you passed the priority or whatever and you're not doing your draw so yeah because from our angle we're like you know he's on thirty five hundred life points he's tactically not drawing a card to be able to uh preserve life <laughs> points up but um yeah like, good. You on the next up. level maths he knows he yep. can't take that last four hundred. That that is true. Um, yeah. why did you choose Trickstar this weekend? Um, I'd been playing Striker before this, but um, I don't think that deck's that great. Like, there's just so many hands that can't play. Uh, as you've seen in the feature match just then. Um, so I went with Trickstar. It's a deck I'm comfortable with. Um, it has a good matchup against Striker and Altergeist, which is pretty pretty popular. The only bad matchup is Thunder, but my deck's just built to really beat that more or less. And then, did you play against many Thunder Dragon decks this weekend? I played two. Uh, beat one, lost one, okay. lost one. Okay, and then all your other matches are just smooth sailing. Uh, yeah, more or less. Uh, Alter Guy Striker are easy matchups for me, so those have been good. Um, few games that were scary getting to time. I versus prank kids against some time. That deck just cheeses, gain some life points, lose some life points. It's real scary, but I got there in the end. Oh, you got there in the end. That's what we like to hear. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, pretty good feeling. Are you ready for top card? You're gonna take it one match at a time. Uh, yeah, that's how I always that's how I always roll. Just I'm there to play my game. Yeah, and hey, we'll see how it goes. Stick to the game plan. You got a game plan against every deck. I got a game plan against every deck. You have a notebook. What well, that notebook? Notebook. I got the not notebook. Oh yeah. Every oh. even yeah. Well, anyway, I've got a question for you. So, yeah. uh, if you were to play the three v three YCS coming up in Atlanta, and you had to pick two teammates from the anime, who would they be, and why? Well, t two teammates from the anime. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd I'd have to say Joey Wheeler, cause uh he's he's real lucky. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean he he's really good with dice rolls. I've uh, seen on <laughs> yeah, always rolling them sixes for his um skull dice. Yeah. Um, and then Duke Devlin. Yeah, Duke Devlin. Yeah, the dice guy. We got the squad. Duke oh. Devlin, me and Joey Wheeler. You like your dice? You like rolling? You, yeah. You, you like leaving everything to a dice roll? Yeah, man. Leave leave the dice roll. Well, it was good chatting to you. I wish you best of luck in the top card. Hopefully hey. we'll see you soon. Thanks for that.